You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Have you ever tried to reach success only to keep falling down again and again? Welcome to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. Shiraz is here to discuss the different ways our belief systems and the stories we tell ourselves create the reality we live in. Listen as Shiraz removes your limiting beliefs and changes your reality. So now, please welcome the host of Energetic Magic, Shiraz. Welcome to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, and iTunes and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Shiraz, and this week we are talking about the stories we create. And as always, if you have some blocks or limiting beliefs, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So for those of you new to this show, I am a belief shifter. And what that means is I obviously shift your beliefs, but how I do that is I am Sorry, there's a lot of energy moving in the audience tonight. So it's a little, little distracting, but we're going to get through this. I have conversations with the people that call in. And I can tell when your conscious beliefs match your subconscious beliefs. And whenever they don't, you are lying. Now, I don't care if you're lying to me. I care if you're lying to you. So when we discover that there's a lie there, I'm going to dig down and find out what the belief is that's creating the lie. So... I could ask, you know, would you like to make an extra hundred thousand dollars this year? And you could say yes, but we see it's a lie. And we dig down and find out the belief is if you make an extra hundred thousand dollars this year, then all these people are gonna come up and ask you for money and you don't want that to happen, so it's better not to have the money, and that's what creates the lie. So once we get to the belief or belief, sometimes you're layering belief on belief on belief, then I'll ask, are you willing to destroy that belief? If you say yes and you mean it, then the belief gets snuffed out in that moment. And when that happens, energy shifts. And when energy shifts for me, when my body feels that shift in energy, like it's sort of feeling in the audience now, I tend to yawn or cough. So expect some yawning and coughing during the show. For you, uh, it's different for every person. The most common sensation is you just sort of feel a little lighter and happier and a, little, and a shift or a flow of energy in your body, but you may not feel anything. You may yawn like I do. You may feel hot or cold or have a muscle spasm, like a little one or a big one. It's different for every person, but everyone's body reacts differently to energy shifts. I may ask, are you willing to step out of your story? And that's the big topic today is stories. So stories are repeated patterns that happen in our lives over and over again. So we have stories like, I find the best parking spots all the time. Or I'm always late for every appointment. Those are just stories that just keep happening. And when you realize you can change the stories and step out of them, you can change a whole bunch of things in your life and basically start rewriting your stories, rewriting your life. Rewriting your reality. That's my book coming out is how to rewrite reality. So as I'm working for, on whoever's calling in, the clearings go out to everyone that's listening. And uh, so when that person says yes to destroying a belief or stepping out of a story, you at home can say yes. It even works on the replay. So if you listen to the replay, it's going to work for you as well. And you'll feel the shifts going on. So... That being said, I just have to, uh, <coughs> that's an energy shift there. People are already ready to shift just by coming on the show, which I love. Okay. And the last thing is, if you ever hear me say, ow, that's because 
the person I'm working on is sending energetic daggers at me because of what we're talking about. So we're, we hit a topic that they feel is precious and they don't want to lose it and they don't want to change it. So rather than allow the change to occur, they'd rather just throw daggers at me and say, stay away from that thing. And those are often the beliefs or stories that are holding you back more than than other stories because you you feel they're so important. So with all that being said, we're going to start off the show, and we actually already have a caller. So Ellie, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Um, no so she has. Uh, I kind of um, lately have uh, so many shifts. I feel that, and I am mm-hmm. aware of that. But I still feel that I do repeat patterns, old patterns, and um, I'm kind of aware that I have to, in order to delete the pattern, I have to react differently. But it seems to me that um, something is holding me back. Okay. So which pattern are you having problems getting out of? Um, I guess he's saying no. And overwhelming myself uh, with the uh, workload or uh, like um, sometimes I feel like uh, I'm a kind of garbage can for emotions uh, around me. You know, I'm picking up everything and it just, uh, and I don't like that. Uh, and okay. uh, at the moment, um, uh, I am on a kind of a cross section. Um, a big time I feel in my life. And uh, I kind of know which direction I should go to, but still I'm debating, and I just want to get rid of that. Uh, I am on a kind of a cross-section. Okay. So, first of all, we will look at the whole saying no thing. So, how do you feel when you don't say no to people? Um, Actually, let's let's start off with how do you, how do you feel when you when you tell people annoyed? no? How does how do, we'll start with how do how do you feel when you tell people no? Um, kind of uh, confused, uh, like very surprised that that's me. You know who okay. says no to the people? Okay. But if I if I say kind of yes again, I am annoyed of myself. You know. Mm-hmm. But I did it again and again. And uh, when when is going to stop? Okay. So what do you believe is wrong about saying no? Um, I don't know. Well, if you haven't been saying no, you obviously have be- believed for a while that something's wrong when you say this. Yes. So yes. what do you feel is wrong about saying no to people? Uh, I, I may hurt them, and I kind of want uh, want everybody around me to, to be happy and to, to just, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know, to, just to help out if I could, yeah. if I, with okay. whatever I could. But it's, it's overwhelming for me. Yes, because you're putting other people's happiness ahead of your own happiness. Exactly, exactly, yeah. yes. And this is something you need to stop doing this. And it's not that you need to stop trying to make other people happier, happy, but your happiness has to come first, right? It's because mm-hmm. if you're not in a place where you're happy, then it's going to affect everyone you work with and it's going to affect you. Yes. And yes. when you... Whew, Okay, so are you willing to destroy the belief that other people's happiness comes before yours? Yes, please. (coughs) (coughs) Yeah, that was a big one, I'm telling you. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, A big uh, potato bag fell off my shoulder. That's how I felt. Oh, good. That was a big shift, yeah. All right. So I want to look at this a little more, but we need to take a break. So uh, just hold on a sec and we'll come right back. This is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. 
The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we're talking about the stories in our lives. And uh, if you have blocks or limiting beliefs, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So we are on the line with Ellie. And Ellie, how do people feel about you, or how do you think people feel about you, when you tell them no? Uh... How do people feel about me? Um, they always, um, when I say no, mm-hmm. or yes. when when I say no. Yes. Um, um, I I think uh, they're gonna take whatever answer I I, I kind of um, <laughs> have for them, um, just like uh, just normal. But the thing uh, is how how I feel about saying mm-hmm. no, right? Um, yeah. And now I can say already it's all right to say no. Okay. That's how I feel at the moment. Okay, good. All right. So the other thing you talked about is, uh, move, was it moving forward? What you, what you want to do next? Um, I kind of want to be able to to trust um, my guidance, my inner guidance more, um, mm-hmm. and um, stop debating and stop. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, just just stop debating. That's all. Okay. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna trust my myself. I wanna trust my guidance. Okay. So the simple thing there is just to take action. Right. So here's the neat thing. If you trust, if you trust your guidance and just take action, then the sooner you take action, the sooner you can confirm you're on the right path. But if you're waiting for all sorts of validation and proof and evidence, then you're not going anywhere. Yeah. So if, even if the idea you get to do is the wrong idea, it's better to start right away, find out it's wrong and change your course than to just sit there and do nothing. And that's what a lot of people do is they wait and they wait and they they ask people, they look for more evidence, they gather more data, when really they can feel that that pull to just go ahead and do something. So are are you willing to destroy the belief that you shouldn't move forward until you're absolutely sure you're on the right path? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. How do you Thank feel? You. That's uh, lighter, lighter in the chest area, quite, quite lighter and freer. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks for being on. Thank you. All right. So we have another caller. Uh, who's the next person in line there? Hi there. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. How can we help you tonight? Well, I recently believe, I've discovered, <laughs> I think I have a story that I want people to take care of me. Okay. Whew. And what happens if people don't take care of you? Um, I don't know. I think I have some doubts that I can take care of myself. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, have you shown that you can't take care of yourself in the past? Uh, sometimes, you know. Um, you know, financially, I have found that although I'm very competent with money, I haven't been able to fully support myself. So, I was trying to figure out what the root cause of that was. And I, I realized that um, um, my mom actually was over, over, overprotective, you know. So I wonder if that had something to do with it. Uh, it'll definitely factor into it. If you make enough money to be able to take care of yourself, does that mean no one will ever take care of you? Say that again? If you make enough money to be able to take care of yourself, does that mean that no one will ever take care of you? Oh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to do both. You know, sometimes it's well, nice to feel taken you, care of, and I also want to be self-sufficient, right? Yeah. But this is what you've you, your brain has done, is it's created a binary choice. It's either... I have money and I don't need to be taken care of or I don't have money and I can get taken care of. But you can right. have money and have someone in your life that wants to take care of you. Right. So are you willing to destroy the belief that unless you need to be taken care of, no one will want to take care of you? Yes. <laughs> I also feel kind of weak, you know, feeling like I need to be taken care of as opposed to in my power, which feels mm -hmm. crappy. Okay. Oof. So are you willing to destroy the belief that you can only be taken care of if you need to be taken care of? Yes. Because you could create a life where you don't need anyone to take care of you. But, you know, it's, say, a, a Saturday night, you don't want to go out and you just want someone to massage your feet <laughs> and, and bring you wine. And it's like, and if you have someone that says, you know, I love you and I'd love to do that for you, even though I know you're fully capable of doing it yourself, that could make for a wonderful evening. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I think I have been very fierce in thinking in saying I don't need anybody to take care of me or help me. I mean, in that fierceness, um, there is no ebb and flow. Yep. Okay. So do you need to try to show that you can take care of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Are you willing to destroy that belief? Ooh, that's just bumping Ooh. right up against my ego. Yeah. 
Because remember, it's okay. not about yeah. being capable of taking care of yourself. It's about showing other people. And when it comes to showing other people, you're just going into this ego space, right? Whether they see you can take care of yourself or not is irrelevant. Right. All right, so let's try one more time. Are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to show other people that you can take care of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll let that process as we take another break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz. We're talking about the stories we create. So, oh, after the break there, how are you doing, caller? Um, better. I feel a little bit lighter. I don't know if there's okay. more in there or not. Okay. So, how... Okay, let's just create a scenario. What if you were on your own, independent, and making enough money to be independent? How does that feel to you? Oh, it feels amazing. It feels it feels like I can count on myself. It feels yep. very free. I feel secure within myself. I don't feel like I need to um, ask for help. If, you know, I'm at choice. Right? I have yep. choice. Right now, I feel less at choice. Okay. And that that's coming up. But there's also some resistance coming up. So when you can take care of yourself, are you alone? Yeah. Okay. So, and that's one of the reasons you're making sure you don't take care of yourself because there's this fear of becoming alone. So are you willing to destroy the belief that if you're able to take care of yourself, you will end up alone? Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, there's some energy. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. So when you are able to fully take care of yourself, you have the choice as to when you want to be alone and when you don't want to be alone. Yeah. Oof. Oh, wow, that's still going. Uh, it's also yeah. hitting a bunch of people yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, that is huge. <sighs> yeah, that felt like a plug got unplugged. <laughs> 
Whew. Okay, there we go. Now it's settling down. Better, worse, same, or different? Oh, definitely different. Yeah, okay. totally different. That feels All right. good. Anything else coming up? Pardon? Is anything else coming up for you? No, no, I think that's the plug that needed to get uncorked. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Drink extra water tonight. Okay. Okay. Thanks for Thank being you. on. All right. We have another caller. Who's next on the line? It's all quiet now. Hello? Hello. Uh, this is Arthur. Hey, Arthur. How's it going? Good. I want to ask about creativity related to money. I find I'm very creative when it comes to like asking questions or dance or writing things or inspirational quotes. But like when I think about money, I don't really feel that upsurge of energy, of excitement and eagerness. So I'd like to destroy some beliefs related to that if possible. Okay, I'm uh, slightly confused because you were talking about creativity and then you shifted over to energy and eagerness. Oh, because when it comes to creativity and like art things, like dance or writing or singing, I can do that on the spot with no effort. And like mm -hmm. the inspiration just comes and I just do well on it. But when it comes to making money, like I'm, I'm kind of confused about like what... Like, it's like you said to the earlier person on the call, you said just take action, the inspiration will will lead you to a place. Like, um, yeah. I'm, just, I'm a little confused about how to actually implement that. It's, okay. There's, there's a couple things going on there. Number one is you believe you have to be creative to make money. Yeah there's lots of ways to make money that have been laid out for you. You just have to choose one. You don't have to be creative about it. Uh, right. Right. So that's, that's one thing. So, um, w instead of trying to be creative, just look at what opportunities are there and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to choose that one. And then, if, you know, if you, if you're to get a job or start a company or, uh, partner up with someone, you know, just go ahead and do that, right? There's probably going to be more creativity in starting a company unless you're following a blueprint by, of, of how to do a, a, a company. But it's there's technically no creativity involved or required um, to make money. Oh, uh, I never realized that. Yeah. Right? I mean, you could just go out and get a, get a job at Tim Hortons and you're good to go. Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Oh, it totally changes the way I think. Okay, cool. Anything else? So basically, like, I would also like to do a job I enjoy. And I've worked at Tim Hortons okay. before, and it was very dissatisfying. It didn't suit my okay. skills, and I didn't enjoy it. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about. I'm not saying Tim Hortons is the job to go get. That was just an example. So you can look for a whole bunch of jobs that appeal to you. That you sit there and go, you know, that's a job I'd really like to go work at. And again, it's just a matter of doing a search and not really being creative. Just this is what I'd like to do. Uh, so just like go to kggmatsu.cnd.ca or whatever. Out yep, there wherever you find jobs, jobs or that. just if you're walking down the street and you see a sign in a window that says help wanted and you like the place where they, the sign is and you just walk in there and say, look, I'm here to help. Uh, However it wants to show up, let it show up. But yeah, you can start going onto the, the websites and doing the searches that way or uh, just be open to the job appearing any way it wants. Wow. Yes, I'm happy you should. That's okay. good enough for me cool. right now. All right. Okay. And again, if you have any blocks or limiting beliefs, the number to call is one eight six six four five one one four five one. We're going to take another break, and I believe we have another caller. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back. 
If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations, Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. I'm Shiraz, and we're talking about the stories we create. And if you have blocks of limiting beliefs, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. We have one more caller, but I don't know if she's actually listening, because on the break we tried to talk to her, and she just kept singing. So, caller, can you hear us? Oh, I think she's just going to continue to sing. (laughs) So... Let's go back to talking about stories. So the, as I said, when we started, the wonderful thing about stories is you get to be right. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, one of the stories that's that's in my book that uh, I've probably talked about on the show again. But it just shows how different people can exist in completely different realities, even though they're in the room or right next to each other. So I was at a singles event and uh, I was at a table with six people. There were four guys and two girls and the other three guys started talking about something and I I talked to the two girls because, you know, it's a singles event. Why would I talk to the guys? And uh, we got into a conversation and then talked about dating and one of the girls said, well, the reason it's hard for girls to find guys is because there's twice as many single girls as are single guys so they've got to fight over the guys and I said that's that's not right there's just as many single guys as single girls in, in our city and she said no because even look right now there's twice as many of us two versus the one of you and I said there are four guys at this table <laughs> and so there's twice as many guys as girls and when I said that, it's like her brain shorted out. It was interesting to watch the expression on her face because she had her story, which was real and true. And in her story, three guys within five feet of her did not exist. They physically just disappeared until I told her, look, they're right there. And then they came back into her reality. And this is the neat thing about the stories you're living in is – what exists for you doesn't necessarily exist for the person right next to you and vice versa. And so you could be in the exact same situation as someone else and take a completely different conclusion away from it. You could be faced with the same situation and one person could think this is impossible and the other person could think it's easy. I remember back when I worked uh, with Bob Proctor He gave the example of two people standing in front of a car dealership and one person's trying to figure out, can he afford to buy a car? And the other person is thinking, okay, what do I need to do to buy this whole dealership? And they could be in exactly the same situation financially, but they're operating on different stories. 
And you have to start looking at what are the stories that are running your life. Because we think that there are these limitations that are out there. And they seem real. They seem solid. They seem like there's no way to get around them. And yet, this is all based on the stories you're creating. So I was just working with a client uh, before the show. And uh, she had some stuff come up, which you know I'm not going to talk about on the show. But one of the things was a uh, hotel bill that she had to pay. And after we finished... Uh, having the conversation, the, the the charges on the hotel bill just disappeared. They just went away because she stepped into a new story. And she's like, how does that even happen? And I'm like, well, it's magic. That's why we call it energetic magic. And I've had these reality shifts happen for my clients over and over and over again because the story starts to change or changes completely. Uh, one of my favorite was where I was working with a girl that – uh, wanted to start a healing practice and she had actually posted on a website that she was available for service two years prior and no one had ever contacted her through that website and as we worked on her beliefs and her stories we found out the blocks about uh, being afraid to be seen uh, being judged what if she tries to do healing and it doesn't work what are people going to think about her how how busy will she get? Is she successful? Will she have time for herself? There was all these reasons not to be successful in the healing practice. And we just started clearing them one after the other after the other. And then at the end of the set, well, after the end of the session, about five, ten minutes after I get a text from her, that someone contact, contacted her through that website, which she hadn't seen any movement on for two years and, and made an appointment to see her. So it's amazing how that shift in stories changes everything. She, her energy was blocking people from seeing her post on that site. And when the energy cleared, people could see the post. So this is the other big thing about stories. Stories are contagious. Other people will buy your stories. You will buy other people's stories. Your stories will affect how people think and act and uh, what they see and what they don't see, what you see and what you don't see. And when you start to recognize your stories, uh, then you, you, can, you can now get to this place where you're like, wow, it's just a story. That's how it works for me. Right? So one of the things to, to do is notice what comes out of your mouth, because when you're talking, you're telling your stories. And the neat thing is, even if you're t saying a cliché, that's a story for you, right? So, and some of the cliches are out there can be pretty bad. Like, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. That's not a story you want to be in. So, uh, what was it? Um, oh, there's, there's just so many out there. I can't even focus on one of them anymore. But there's so many cliches that work for us and that don't work for us. Like one that works for you, the world is my oyster. That means, you know, you can find a pearl wherever you want in the world. That's a great story. All right. Um, think about, think about what you say repeatedly in your life. Think about the words and phrases you've picked up from your parents that you repeat now. Right. Uh, I remember one girl in my class had her parents used to always say, you can be rich and miserable or poor and happy. And that's another thing when we talk about binary thinking, a lot of people get stuck in binary stories. So you have one choice or you have another choice when there's actually an infinite amount of choices to go by. And when you stop thinking in binary terms and, and say, well, what are all the possibilities here? things start to show up. Just getting into that question, what are all the possibilities, will cause your brain to sort of shift and then see other things that you didn't see before. Uh, it, it will even cause things to just to come towards you that have never been there before. Opportunities just pop up. So we're going to talk more about how you can start manipulating your stories and the different types of stories you are in when we come back from the break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. 
Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists, and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281 515 3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment LLC. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. I am Charles. We've been talking about the stories that we create and live in. And if you have any blocks, limiting beliefs, the number to call is 1-866-451-1451. So talking about stories being contagious, stories can also be quite addictive. And in my book, I talk about the different ways stories are addictive. So we're going to just sort of go over some of those ways right now. So the first way is subconsciously. And what happens is, uh, using the example we just talked about, where you have twice as many single girls as single guys. When you've got that story running in you subconsciously, and you believe there's twice as many single girls as single guys, then you're only going to notice the conditions that match it. And you're going to ignore all the conditions that don't match it. So you're going to plan your events. So you end up in situations where there are more girls than guys. So you can say, look, see, more single girls than single guys. Uh, You're going to happily recall every conversation where someone agreed with you about there being more single girls than single guys. You are going to forget all the instances where someone contradicted you. Unless you had an argument with them and you were proved them wrong somehow. Then you're going to remember that. Your dominant thoughts shape your reality. So most of the time, you will not see your subconscious is causing you to make decisions and edit your experiences to justify the story you're in. So you're actually creating evidence of your story as you go and then looking back and say, look, there's evidence, except you don't realize you created the evidence. And this subconscious addiction to the the story causes you to just keep keep creating evidence so you can anchor that story in deeper and deeper as your life goes along. So that's one way. The second way is chemically. Now, you love to be right. And every time you get to be right about your story, you get a fix in your system. So you actually get dopamine and adrenaline flooding into your brain each time you're right. And (laughs) these are hormones that make you feel good. And... You like them even if you've just been through a horrible situation. So let's say your story is every time I get into a relationship, my partner betrays me. So then you get into a new relationship and it seems to be going well. And then you find out your partner cheated on you. And then you're like, oh, my God, my partner cheated on me. It feels horrible. But then you realize, oh, it happened again. My partner cheated on me. And you get your little fix. And even though you went through the horrible experience, you get that fix and it feels good. So, okay, now we've got to do it again. So, you know, 
it it seems kind of weird, but this is why people choose being right over being happy or healthy or wealthy or in amazing relationships. So, and and the neat thing is, like people don't realize or, or tend to put out their minds that you can have a wonderful story and still get that fix of dopamine and adrenaline when that story comes true. But because you're stuck in, in the one story and getting your fix, you don't think, oh, wait, wait, how can I get my fix a different way? Because when you get out of that story, it is like breaking an addiction. So you've got to get into the new story. You've got to start getting the addiction from the new story. But because the new story is in contradiction to the old story, it's hard to see the evidence of that new story for the first little while because it's suddenly, you know, you've got 100 pieces of evidence of the old one and now you change the story and now you've got one piece of evidence of the new one. And for a lot of people, instead of just focusing that, oh, wow, here's new evidence and let's just go by that evidence, they hang on to the old evidence even though that's all invalid now. You can really just discount that because you've made the shift, but most people don't do that. Their brains are like, 100 pieces versus one, not convinced yet. So another way that you can get addicted is uh, neurologically. So whenever we create a memory of something, we create neural pathways to store the memory and the beliefs. And when you have similar experiences, you're creating a neural pathway for each one, but your brain likes to keep itself organized. So if you have a lot of similar neural pathways, it tends to lump them together. So instead of little tributaries and streams of thoughts, you get this raging river. And the thing is, when you create a raging river of thoughts, not only do you think those thoughts more, but you want to add on to those thoughts. So you actually cause yourself to think more about those memories that upset you, even though, but it also created an addiction. And then in thinking of that, then you create more memories and then you just keep adding and adding. So when you start to step out of the story, the these uh, neural pathways start to disintegrate and, and go away and and new, a new one forms according to the new stories. But again, you're, you're still being pulled to think those thoughts quite a bit. It can even cause you to, if you haven't thought those thoughts in a while, because you need that little hit of those thoughts, um, it'll just pop up in your head. Right? And this is uh, often some, things like with PTSD, people are going along really well and all of a sudden something just triggers them to go back and get into that neural pathway. The addiction's there. It feels horrible at a conscious level, but at a neurological level, oh, this feels great. This is, this is what we're used to. This is what we've been creating. So you can see with these different ways of creating that addiction it can be really hard and this is why when i work with people we can create as, you, as you've heard on the show we can create change in minutes and get people out of stories and for some people if they're strong enough they stay out of the stories but for a lot of people they start to slip back after a while which is why we have multiple sessions going on to keep you in the new story and to keep ripping away evidence of the old story and any other stories that show up and keep the new stories uh, stuck in you and building on you so that you can go into a whole new reality. And uh, it's just neat watching people slip out of an old story, go into a new story and watch their life change and uh, seeing the effects, seeing the, the magic show up. I'm always amazed at, at the ways magic shows up in people's lives. I've seen uh, businesses double. I've seen people find that sp specific partner they've been looking for. I've seen uh, illness disappear. And all of those are just tied to stories, right? As someone who used to have rheumatoid arthritis and found out that was just my story, you know, I've and, and I've worked with other people, I can tell you that um, any chronic illness you've got is related to a story that's running inside you. It is a solution for a problem you don't, you don't realize you have, and it's an addiction that you're stuck on. So you can change that story and actually change the, your physical being in the process. And it's, it's really cool. So remember that you're not just a character in your life. You are the author in your life. 
and you can write whatever life you want. And we're going to finish up the show after the next break. So this is Shiraz on Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back to Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, iHeart, iTunes, and TuneIn Radio. I am Shiraz, and we've been talking about the stories we live in. So, as I was saying before the break, you are the author of your story. And when you're willing to recognize that and acknowledge that life isn't just happening to you and you have to deal with the circumstances that show up, but you are creating the circumstances that show up. At first, that can seem uncomfortable or frustrating because you look at some of the circumstances, you're like, I don't want to say I'm creating this. Why would I create this? This sucks. But when you embrace that, then you can think and say, okay, this is what I've been creating based on the stories that I'm in. Now, if I create new stories, I can create something completely different. And because I am the author, I can start creating whatever the hell I want. And this lesson has been very, very powerful for me. As I said, I've gotten rid of illness with it. I removed a $40,000 debt in 10 minutes using this stuff. Um, And right now, whenever it looks like I might have money problems, I'm just like, no, but I don't have money problems. Money's just going to show up right when I need it. And more money shows up. So it's a cool place to live, but it means taking full responsibility for what shows up in your life. And so when things don't go my way, I don't sit there and go, why is this happening to me or what's going on? I, I ask myself, wow, why did I create that? What did I think? Why did I think that would be of benefit to my life? Because everything you're creating is based on stories that f- make you feel like there's a benefit to them, right? The benefit may seem completely illogical to you. Like for my arthritis, the benefit was I don't have to be responsible for people because I'm in pain in bed and no one can come up and say, hey, you know what? You need to do this and take care of these people, right? <laughs> I, I could have just said, you know what? If someone asked me to take care of someone, I could say no. But I, I wasn't in a position where I wanted to say no. I didn't like saying no, just like we had one of the callers earlier. And that's actually a very powerful thing. When you get strong in your nose, 
you become so much more powerful in what you can create because we try to accommodate other people. We try to make everyone happy. We try to make everyone like us. And that means saying yes to a lot of things, even though we don't want to. But when you're strong in your no's for what other people demand of you and your yeses for what you demand of yourself, that alone will create powerful changes in your life. So I invite you to look at those two words and start being with them in different ways in your life as you move forward. So let's look forward at what's coming up. We're almost in September and the next 25 day program starts in September and it is Taming the Ego. So this is usually one of the more powerful 25 day sessions because a lot of people have ego issues they don't even realize and we start hitting them big in the 25 day program. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my website at www.energeticmagic.com and look for the upcoming events and uh, sign up for that. On September 14th, we have a full day workshop attracting money with greater ease. This is available online. You just send, need to send me an email. My contact information is on the website and say I'd like to attend online. But it is being held in Toronto. And uh, uh, we're going to be looking at the individual money blocks uh, in the class and, and working on each person to make sure that we get rid of money blocks of them so more money can flow into their lives. Um, also, I have a focus group coaching. I'm only six people allowed in it at a time. And, and we've got a health one coming up if you're interested in joining that. So again, look on my website. But that's it for today. Uh, we will, oh my gosh, we will not be back next week. I will be away again. We'll be back the week after. So until then, be well, be aware, and be magical. You've been listening to Energetic Magic with your host, Shiraz. What if by changing the beliefs that you don't even realize you have, you could create magic in your life? Listen each week as Shiraz will help you identify and remove those subconscious beliefs, releasing the hold they have on you here on Energetic Magic. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company